In this video, we're going to derive the full conditional distributions for the parameters of a multivariate normal distribution. This is the first step in implementing a Gibbs sampler for approximating the posterior distributions of the parameters. In this example, we assume we have n observations that are independent and identically distributed, d-dimensional multivariate normals with mean mu and covariance matrix sigma. The prior distribution of mu is also a d-dimensional multivariate normal with mean mu naught and covariance matrix L naught. Lastly, we assume that sigma has an inverse Wishart distribution with nu naught degrees of freedom and scale matrix K naught. If you're not familiar with these distributions, you may find them in Bayesian data analysis by Gelman et al. or a first course in Bayesian statistics by Peter Hoff. The first thing we're going to do is simplify the density functions for each of the relevant distributions. We start by simplifying the density of the data distribution. The joint data density is the product of the marginal densities of each of the random vectors. Because we're multiplying many of the same terms, n times 2 pi to the negative d over 2 power becomes 2 pi to the negative nd over 2 power. Sigma to the negative 1 half power becomes sigma to the negative n over 2 power. And the product of the exponential functions can be simplified as the exponential function of the sum of the exponents. We then use the proportional to symbol to drop any terms not involving mu or sigma, since they will simply be scaling constants in the work that follows. The prior density for mu is the multivariate normal density with the appropriate parameters. We once again use the proportional to symbol to drop any terms that don't involve mu or sigma. Lastly, the prior density for sigma can be written as the following complicated expression. Once again, we do not care about any terms that do not involve mu or sigma, so we use the proportional to symbol to get rid of any terms that will not be relevant in subsequent analysis. We now go through the process of determining the unnormalized posterior density. The posterior density is proportional to the product of the data density, the prior density for mu, and the prior density for sigma. Taking the relevant portions of our previous derivations, the joint posterior density is proportional to this product. We'll now go through the process of deriving the full conditional distribution of the mean vector mu. Starting with our unnormalized posterior density, we drop any terms not involving mu because mu is the only random vector in the work that follows. Thus, the full conditional distribution for mu is proportional to the product of these two exponential terms. Since the product of two exponentials is the exponential function of the sum of their powers, we combine everything into one exponential function. Note that the lambda naught inverse should actually be an L naught inverse. We then expand this product to get this sum here. We can actually combine these two terms. Since yi transpose sigma inverse mu is a scalar or one by one matrix, it equals its transpose which becomes mu transpose sigma inverse yi transpose. After taking the transpose of the first term, we combine the two terms to get negative two mu transpose sigma inverse yi. We then distribute the sum to get the updated expression here. We now want to point out that the sum of the observed data vectors, which can be expanded to look like this, simplifies to the sum of the individual components. And if we multiply that by n over n, can be written as n y bar, where y bar replaces this matrix. Let's continue to simplify. We can now replace the sum of the data vectors by n y bar. We now want to simplify the second half of the exponential function. Noting that mu transpose L naught inverse mu naught is a scalar or one by one matrix, it equals its transpose, which equals mu naught transpose L naught inverse mu. We now simplify that second term to this sum shown here. We now combine these two terms and factor out the mu transpose and mu. We also combine these two terms and factor out a mu transpose to get this updated expression. Since mu naught transpose L naught inverse mu naught does not involve mu, we once again use the proportional to symbol to drop it from our expression. We now define ln inverse to be the sum of the data precision and the prior precision for mu. We then replace this term by ln inverse to get the updated expression here. We then multiply by the identity matrix in the form of ln inverse times ln. We now define mu n to equal ln times the sum of n sigma inverse y bar plus l naught inverse mu naught. 
we then replace the term shown here with mu in. We want to complete the square so we can get the nice quadratic form shown here. So we want to add mu in transpose ln inverse mu in, which is okay since we use our proportional to symbol and since we're simply adding a scaling constant, since this term does not involve the random vector mu. We can then factor out mu minus mu in transpose in the front and mu minus mu in in the back to get this nice quadratic form. Note that this is the kernel of a multivariate normal distribution with mean vector mu in and covariance matrix L in. Thus, the full conditional distribution for mu is multivariate normal with mean vector mu in and covariance matrix L in. We now want to derive the full conditional distribution of sigma. Before we do that though, we need to recall some facts about the trace operator. First of all, the trace operator is simply the sum of the diagonal elements of a matrix. Now assume that A, B, and C are three matrices that have the appropriate dimensions for performing the matrix operations below. First, the trace of the sum of two matrices is the sum of the trace of the individual matrices. Additionally, the trace of the matrix product A times B times C is equal to the trace of the matrix product B times C times A, which is also equal to the trace of the matrix product C times A times B. This is known as a cyclic property of the trace operator. Next, we recall that the joint posterior density of mu and sigma is proportional to this product here. We now have what we need to derive the full conditional distribution of sigma. The full conditional distribution of sigma is proportional to this product here, which was obtained by taking the unnormalized posterior density and dropping any terms not involving sigma. We then combine the exponents of the determinant of sigma to get this term here, and combine the powers of the exponential functions into a single sum. Noting that this quadratic term is a scalar value or a one by one matrix, the single value must equal its trace. Thus, we replace this quadratic form with the trace of the quadratic form. If we label the components of the quadratic form C, A, and B, we then use the cyclic property to reorder the matrices. Recalling that the sum of the trace of a matrix is the trace of the sum of the matrices, we re-express this term as the trace of the sum of the individual matrices. We once again have the sum of the trace of two matrices, which we combine into the trace of the sum of the matrices. We then factor out the sigma inverse term to get the trace of the sum of these two matrices multiplied by sigma inverse. If we define nu n to equal nu naught plus n, s mu to equal the sum of the product of yi minus mu times yi minus mu transpose, and kn to equal s mu plus k naught, we see that the full conditional distribution for sigma is proportional to the determinant of sigma raised to this power, multiplied by the exponential function of negative one half the trace of kn times sigma inverse, which is proportional to the probability density function of an inverse Wishart distribution with new n degrees of freedom and scale matrix kn. Thus, the full conditional distribution for sigma is an inverse Wishart distribution with new n degrees of freedom, where new n is the sum of new naught plus n, and scale matrix kn, where kn is the sum of s mu plus k naught. I'll conclude this video by showing the final form for the full conditional distribution of mu and the full conditional distribution of sigma.